Okay, today we're gonna go through our change of direction progressions. We're gonna talk about how we start really controlled and then we work our way into a chaotic envir environment like you saw with Isaiah in the ACL video. Now, when we're doing this, the biggest thing that somebody has to get into is they gotta get into the right shapes and they gotta feel it. Something that people talk about all the time, get an athletic position or you gotta be able to lean this way or get your center of gravity this way, but we never practice it before you start getting into the drill. So one of the first things I do, it's so simple, is I'll get somebody into the positions and I'm gonna make them shift their weight so they can really feel where I want them to cut, especially in a bilateral position. We'll get into the one leg cut in a little bit. But right here, even just doing this, now my hip, my knee and my ankle, they're in alignment, okay? My hip, my knee and my ankle, they're all working together. And then what I want them to do is feel being able to cut off their feet. Now, really hard to get somebody to do it when you're just running a drill, but I can get an entire football team, 100 guys. We'll get here, feet barely outside of us. Think about gripping the ground, get our weight shifted, get a good posture and feel here like I'm about ready to run out of that position. And that is what we're really trying to work on and be able to get in that position. Same thing on a forward or an uphill cut, being able to feel getting into the positions that I need to get in to be able to cut. And that's what we're gonna work on. Okay, so to be able to change directions efficiently, okay, the first thing you gotta be able to do is your hip, your hip, knee, and your ankle need to be able to work together at the same time. Seems like it's simple, but a lot of us, when we cut, we'll choose like a hip dominant strategy. You'll cut and you won't load into your, into your knee here, or vice versa, it's rare, but you'll see somebody cut and they'll be in this position. They're gonna be slow, okay, and you're really gonna have a good chance of getting hurt. I want your hip, your knee, and your ankle to be compliant. They're all gonna work together. So if I'm cutting here, I can load all three of these together. It doesn't matter if I'm coming out of a back pedal or going into a 45, they gotta work together. And the more we can do that in a controlled environment, we believe the more you're gonna transfer that as you start getting into the game in a chaotic environment. So I'm gonna use Pete to help me walk our way through this, okay? So one thing that we do all the time is a pogo, thanks to the Altus guys, but when we do this, we're not looking for speed or height off the ground. We're just looking for compliance and trying to be light and bouncy. Now, Pete's one of the best guys we have change directions. If you watch him do this pogo, again, it seems simple. His ankle, his knee, and his hip, they all work together. Then when he cuts, it does the exact same thing. So Pete, go. If you look here, they're all bending. They're all flexing together, working together. Good, relax. Okay, again, seems super simple, okay, but that's something that we got to make sure they can do before we ever even start trying to get them into those cutting positions. Now, before we do what we're going to do today, we've already been working with these teams or these groups for a long period of time before we start getting them complex. The last thing I want you to think about, and we talk about all the time, but is the foot. So if you watch his foot on the pogo, I like the whole foot contact because I really think, especially when you change direction, you need that ankle to be strong. You need it to be stiff. You hear that all the time? But also we like it for surface area on the cut. I don't want to reach with my toe. I know that's weird, but a lot of guys reach with their toe. One, it's going to be real slow right here. That impulse on the ground is going to be real slow. But two, you have a really big chance of rolling your ankle or having something in your knee and your hip go wrong when you make the cut. So let's watch Pete's foot here as he does this pogo. See how strong he is here? Okay, we want that in every single cut we do. Good, relax, Pete, great job. But when we start the change of direction, again, if, if I haven't worked with them before on this, the first thing I'm gonna have them do is get that feel. Okay, so we're gonna start, okay, with the lateral cuts here, where we're going on both feet here, where we're gonna use both feet to cut. So majority of my weight is on my inside leg. So we gotta learn how to control our center of gravity on our inside half. We're gonna work on the outside half here in a second. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna have Pete do is gonna walk through with me. Right now, Pete, get your feet a little wider than your hips. Okay, I want you to get in that position. Now, Pete, I want you to just shift your weight over this way. Now, get your hands like you're about to be able to run here. Get on the edges of your feet. So now, if you watch that in the video, when he started, his weight was back, okay? Because that's kind of like weight room, heels on a squat, flat-footed. I want him on the edges of his feet to where now, like, Pete feels like he can get out of that movement. That's what I want him to get in. So, Pete, we get back into it. You really take somebody through that feel. Now, Pete, shift your hips straight across. Now get your weight on that, yes, and now you see it's centered. He's on that foot, he can use both feet to push. He's not just picking this one up here. He's powerful out of that position. So I bring the whole group in, we get there. You can hit that right, and then we can learn how to do that in an aggressive cut. That's where we're gonna have a ton of success. So what we're gonna do is now, Pete's just gonna take two shuffles in for the sake of the video. I usually go off of five yards or three shuffles but he's gonna go shuffle, shuffle, and he's gonna stick and hold. We're gonna watch him here. Our goal is that he lands perfect. He doesn't get there and fix it. He's already perfect. His weight, his center of gravity is on his inside half. 
His feet are in the right positions. He's on the edge of his feet where he could come out and rip it. On you. So hold, don't move. So right here, if you watch Pete, right? Weight shifted, he's good. I would like his hands in a position like he was gonna run, but this foot is a little bit behind. So it's a little back here, okay? I want it to be here. Now relax, Pete. Now in a game, that foot might get behind. Right now as we're teaching, I'm gonna over-exaggerate, trying to be perfect so that if I hit and I come through here, I don't have to swing that leg around. Again, we get in a chaotic environment sometimes, even if I'm here but my weight's shifted, you get in that position, that does happen. Pete, let's go one more time. So Pete, as we land, I want that right hand up like you're about ready to come out of it, all right? Ready, go. Hold, much better. Now Pete looks like he can get out of this, he can shift, his money. Okay, so one of the biggest parts of change of direction that we want to be able to do is control our center of mass. You hear that all the time. When you tell a kid that, to me, is center of gravity, even an elite athlete, they don't know, belly button, hips, whatever. To me, it's that shift. To me, it's like, if I'm going here and I'm about to have to cut out, I got to get my weight shifted in the direction I want to go. Now, whatever strategy I choose with my feet, we can work on that. But if your weight's not shifted in the direction that I want to go to, you're not going to have any success. So Pete does a really good job of controlling that center of gravity. What you want to look for if you're an athlete or you're working on it, when I land and I cut, if my hips are here. So if I'm like this, which seems like you, you wouldn't want to do that, so many people get here, it's going to be slow and you're going to get hurt. Second thing is, if my weight shifts and all my weight gets to my outside, now it's going to take me so long. I have to decelerate on that outside, re-accelerate, come out. It's going to take me so long to get out. If I can get my weight shifted in the direction I want to be in, now I'm already here. It's going to make this position a lot easier to get out of. Okay, so we'll watch Pete one more time on the shuffle. Pete on you. Good. Now you'll see how narrow Pete's cutting. He's worked with me for a long time. I like to keep the feet narrow in the gym because we're gonna get caught in some wide bases in the field and we'll practice those. But the more confined, the better I make him at the beginning on those, on those drills, the better I think he's gonna have success in the long run, at least getting close to the shapes that we want him to get him into. Okay, so after that, now we're gonna take him through a cross. So, so, so let's go here, Pete. So now he's gonna do a side run, okay, or a cross. So he's thinking about, I'm gonna go two crosses and then stick and hold. Now, most people see this side run, they think, oh, the 5'10'5 five, or the pro agility. I think you do it in tons of sports. You watch a soccer player, they're looking downfield, crossing like this all the time. They're here in this position. You see a DB or a linebacker, we're in this position. And, and, and it happens all the time. Basketball foot, floor, you're going through here. You see it all the time, the cross. So don't be rigid about it. I like to tell the guys, it's literally like I'm, I'm running, but my eyes are here, okay? The one thing that's gonna make this cut harder, now on the cross, our velocity is gonna be a lot faster. Our speed is gonna be a lot faster. So he really has to get his weight shifted. So now he's here, he's gonna go two crosses, stick, and then hold. And again, the goal is to land perfect, not to fix it when I get there. I'm already right, I'm already perfect. Now, we, we repeat it, they never are at the beginning. We repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until they do it right. And then we build it, and then we build it, and then we build it, and that's the whole point of this video. So Pete, we'll go two crosses, stick, and hold. Yeah, hey, let's see it. Uh, was that? Starting right here. Starting right here, on you. Good, now, good. So Pete's getting a little camera shy. That was a terrible cut. He's a lot better at that, but it's good. It's good to see, because that strategy he chose, he was pretty good, and then before going into it, he did a hop and jumped up and he landed with his feet narrow. One, that hop, we're gonna lose a lot of time. Two, with your feet together and narrow like that, you're gonna fail all the time. So Pete, we're gonna go again. I want you to watch me here. So I'm literally going two crosses, okay, to where I stick and I hold and I land perfect. So now I should get rid of any of those extra steps. So it's here, it's one, two, stick, and then hold in that position. We got it? Okay, let's go again, Pete. On you. Money, there, there we go, much better, okay? That's the position that we want to get him in. I start super slow like that, and then the goal is a little bit quicker, and then a little bit quicker, and then a little bit quicker, and then we start getting them to run out of it. So now, Pete, we're back here. The goal is to start with the easiest transition and then work our way to the hardest transition. So the beginning, the shuffle, you're moving slow. Your feet are already where they're supposed to be under my hips, it makes it easy. The next one, we start crossing. You're already lateral, but it makes that cut a little bit easier. Now, we're gonna go a forward sprint 
into a turn and we got to stick and hold the same, the same position. So if you're five yards, okay, you have to think about in my head, what are my last two steps? And I really want to attack that in here. Okay, I like to think about my last two here is going to be left, right. Okay, so where I really know that position, I'm going to go left, all my weight's going to shift and I'm going to get here. So if you watch me on this chair, I'm going to go all the way through five, so be ready for me. So I'm here, I'm going to go two hard steps to the left on that second one, I'm already shifting my weight into this position. So now all my weight is already here and I'm in this position to where I can get out of this cut a lot faster. Okay, that's what we're going to work on here. So we, we killed the shuffles, okay, then we killed the side runs. Now we're going to go the sprint into the change of direction. So Pete, let's go left leg back. You're thinking about two with that left leg, Pete. So you go one on the second one. I turn, stick and hold. Pete on you. Yeah, money, money. So if you watch him here, okay, the one thing I didn't like is he kind of changed his elevations with his head. So we're going to lose a lot of time with that vertical displacement too, especially a running back football player's pad level. He's got to be low. I want to think about I'm staying same height the whole entire time. I'm trying to be able to stick that the entire time. Pete, here we go, ready? Left leg back, on you. Monty, good job, let's go one more. I love it that you're seeing it live because some of the things that you're seeing, his weight on that one, it shifted outside and he had to bring it back. We need that to be on the inside. Okay, let's go one more time. There it was, there it was. Third rep, he kills it. I, you can do as many reps as you want. I use threes usually work well for me. I like to kind of just build intensity as we go. Now we're going to pr progress into the actual transition out of it. Okay, so now we're going to work on the transition to where we're actually we're going to start running in and out of it. Now before we get to that, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. The whole point of change of direction, the whole point of like working on it, is to spend the smallest amount of time possible changing speeds. So being able to get to zero and then as fast to 100 as back as you possibly can. Or if you're, if, you're, if you're not getting to a zero and you're running like an uphill cut to where it's you're minimizing any, any drop in miles per hour. That's what we want, okay? So that's why we start with these. We start getting in these shapes and then it's like, okay, we learn how to stop. We learn how to stop, we learn how to stop. We learn how to bounce out of them, bounce out of them, bounce out of them. And then we go faster and faster and faster and faster. Then we get more chaotic and more chaotic and more chaotic to where we start tr trying to create it like a running back that's looking at the line and having to find a hole, jump cut, and then accelerate the way that we work on. Okay, so the next progression, we're gonna do the shuffles into it. What I'd like to get them to feel is literally we're just gonna go one smooth, easy step out of it. Now I want them to feel that same bounce that we feel on a pogo to where when he's shuffling, he's literally bouncing smooth out of it. I wanna use both feet. I don't wanna push off the outside foot, drop this foot. I don't wanna push where I'm just reaching here and there's no weight on this foot. I want both feet to work here. Everybody's gonna kinda of pick their own strategy on how to get out. I just want to spend the smallest amount of time on that transition. The faster in and out that we are, the more success we're going to have. So same thing here is I'm going to have them feel. So Pete, right now, I just want you to just night light and bounce. Do it. Okay, relax. Every one of your cuts, I want you to feel that in and out. We're going to go three cuts. The first one, smooth. You're going to just feel your body just thinking about smooth, hit, smooth out. Now right there is even really slow, okay? The next one, you're gonna go a little faster. Third one, pretty hot out, okay? So we'll go here. Smooth, lean, good job. Perfect, perfect. So now, Pete, I wanna go a little bit farther and I wanna go a little faster on the way out, okay? On you. Turn and go, good job. So you'll see that a lot and Pete's doing a great job with the drill and again, he's thinking a lot because the camera's here but he hit and he took a step straight across like this. I don't want that. I want to hit and I want to turn and get in the direction that I want to go. Okay, so Pete, last one, same speed, bouncing out, but I want you to get those hips turned as fast as you can. Lean, good job, yes, much better. You saw his center of gravity on his inside, used both feet and he accelerated out. That's the goal. Now from there, we'll do the exact same progressions. On the side run, hit, boom and go. And then the sprint, same thing, turn and go. Now, the sprint is a really tricky one because now you're gaining, going a lot faster and you're really doing a 180 degree cut, okay? What I don't like to see, okay, is this action or like I'm spinning around a cone. What I like to see is it's like two hard steps in and then bam, I'm out. 
and I, when I say two hard steps, two hard steps in five yards. The farther you go on the sprint, the more steps you're gonna need to take to decelerate. But in the five yards, where I know I'm gonna hit, boom, left, right, pop, and I'm coming out of that as hot as I possibly can. That, that's what I'm looking for when I get into it. I don't wanna see a big rounded motion, a bunch of choppy steps. I wanna be able to get out of that position. Now, one thing I want you to think about, if you look at Pete's last cut, he did it unreal and he wasn't even thinking about it. But when we accelerate, we really wanna feel our body project. We wanna gain ground. We want our hip and our thigh to go forward. Something I'm always talking to my athletes about, okay, now we're getting good on the transition. You gotta get out of that cut as fast as you can. You gotta accelerate as hard as you possibly can. What you'll see a lot of times is you'll get rid of that projection that you've been working on forever in your training sessions to where you hit, now hips go back. I do a bunch of cuts, I didn't go anywhere. It almost looks fast, like when you see a receiver, you think he's going fast, his feet are doing this on the ground, but he didn't gain anywhere. His whole goal is to try to create separation from the defensive back, that's not gonna work. You gotta be able to put your foot in the ground, hit, and then bam, I gotta be able to get out. Or to where if I'm here, I gotta be able to hit and then get out. But I'm trying to go in the direction I want. So on these cuts, the better we get at making the transitions, now I start really trying to get him to think about that excel. So now I'm trying to get my hips, my thigh, my body to project and go in the direction I wanna go. Now, I don't wanna reach, okay? This foot might be short, but as long as my hips are going forward, okay, I'm winning. That's what I want, okay? I don't wanna see here, here and coming like that, which almost every time I see an athlete do that in, the, in this drill, that's exactly how he or she moves when they're, in, when they're in their sport. So as we progress through that, make sure they're sprinting the way that we sprint all the time. That's how you start putting everything together because everything in here from the weight room to the speed to everything, it's a system to where they all work together. So you got to keep relating that with your athletes and athletes says you're doing it. You got to keep relating with that with how you're gonna do your sport. The cool thing about those, you can do them in a really small amount of space. You can do them with somebody that's got maybe a hip or a hammy issue. You can really work on some simple progressions, change direction where you're not gonna cause a lot of stress to the system. You can decrease the intensity and you can just focus on the transition of the cuts. I get somebody with a messed up ankle, if we're starting to work our way back into it, if they can't hit these simple smooth cuts, there's no way they're gonna be able to hit those when they start getting back to sports. So that's, that's the cool thing about it. Now, that was all inside leg, okay? So where my weight is all on my inside. Doesn't mean I'm just using my inside, but we call it inside leg because my weight is gonna be here. Now, you don't get to do that a lot in sport. Maybe a runner back on a jump cut, he gets to get into here. But a lot of times, your weight might be on the inside, but you might be on one foot here. Your weight's gonna be on your outside to where you're cutting here. So now we're gonna work more on that, that single leg cut, and again, we like to use both, but as far as coaching terms, I like to say the single leg or that outside leg, but to where now we're gonna really feel using the whole foot, and it's the same thing. My hip, my knee, and my ankle need to work together. So we do a forward shuffle to where I'm loading into my foot. Now, just like I did on the lateral change of direction where I'm shifting hips, now I'm gonna do this on one leg. So Pete, I'm gonna have you come here. Okay, we're gonna step forward and I want you to roll through your heel and load into that front foot like you're about to cut. Good, now Pete, now Pete good job. But I want you to kind of stick and hold that. Let's go left arm up. Okay, now what I'm gonna have Pete do, and if I had a group of kids, I'd be like, I just want you to kind of just feel yourself shift into this to where my hip, now you feel, his, you saw his first one was a little rocky and now much how more smooth that is. Okay, good, relax Pete. That's what I'm trying to get him to feel. I'm trying to get him to feel this action to where even if, if I'm in a higher cut, it's like I'm in a soccer and I'm, a, I'm on the pitch and I have a huge distance to cover and I might be cutting up here, I still need these to work together. That's why I like to start them here and they can really kind of feel my hip, my knee and my ankle work together. I'm not doing this, I'm not up on my toe, I'm not on the outside part of my foot, I'm in a good position. That's what I really love to feel. So we'll do Pete one more time. I like to, do, I like to step into it, heel through my toe, load into it. And then I'm gonna go, Pete, kind of rock back and forth and kind of just feel yourself load into that ankle. Yes, so that right there, that's the position I'm trying to get him into, relax. Now again, it's just something that I've done to where it's like, hey, I'm trying to get him a cut on their outside foot as we're running a 15 yard drill. They've never even done it before. They don't even know what it's supposed to feel like. I need to break that down to its simplest form. To me, that's the simplest form outside of the weight room that we can do. Okay, so what I'm gonna have Pete do, is just gonna do a forward shuffle five yards, stick and hold, and his goal is, same thing, when he lands, He's already in a position he can cut in, not a position that he has to fix to get in. 
he's already in that exact same position here. Pete, so we'll go right leg forward. Okay, we're gonna stick and hold. Okay, five yards on you. Good, now if you watch him, again, here, look at the posture. Okay, hip, knee, and ankle are working together. As he was doing the shuffle, <clears throat> his hips and his shoulders weren't changing planes. His hip was loading over his ankle. Good, relax. Those are all the things that I want to do to warm up for a cut. Okay, those things really help get the body and the nervous system ready to cut off of that outside foot. Okay, now the cool thing about that drill and the, and the, the lateral shuffles or the lateral side runs are doing before, now you can start putting them into any shape that you want to recreate in your sport. So like, I can really start working on a forward shuffle into a 90 degree cut to where again, I'm feeling that whole foot. I can start working on more of that 45 degree cut like we do in almost any team sport to where now I'm feeling myself load into that leg, push and then cut out to where when that foot hips, I land perfectly and then I project with my hips. I create space. Or if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, I close space where it's here and I gain ground. I don't like the outside foot here and my hips like this or too much of my weight going here in this position before I come to here. It's just slow, okay? It's not good. That's what we don't want. You can feel here, hips and thigh project in the position we want to do. And that's the great thing about that shuffle that we can work on as we work our way through it. So we're going to have Pete do a couple here where you're really going to see him project and run out. Yes. Pete's an athlete too. He's just getting a little camera shy, I think, you know? Pete, that was your best cut. That's my dog. So the nice things about these progressions is you can use them with any athlete. We use these with our NFL athletes and we use these with our young uh, female 10-year-old girls soccer players and we use these with our return to play like our ACL athletes. The biggest thing is you can't skip steps. You cannot try to just try to get into a game environment. As soon as you, if you skip steps, they get there, they're gonna go right back to their old habits. We've had a lot more success when we really make sure they are a master of the basics, they are a master of the foundations. Then we start making the environment here to where now they have to pick the strategy. Am I either on my inside leg? Am I cutting here? Am I here? Our goal is, is that our center of gravity controlled, our hip and our knee and our ankle are working together because your knee's gonna get in some weird positions, but if they're working together, we're gonna make those cuts really specific and really fast. That's where we see the transfer into the sport. The cool thing about it too is, as you do these progressions, because we do these pregame, as you do these progressions, you don't have to do a lot of reps. The confidence you see in yourself, if you're the athlete or you see in your athletes, it's like they just know they can get in out of those cuts then you start competing, you go head to head, and they just start ripping it on the field. So the biggest thing for me on change of direction is make sure you get into the right shapes. Teach them how to feel it or yourself feel it. Whatever your position is, there's a lot of different positions than what I showed you here today, but you gotta practice in a controlled environment. Ask yourself, how many times have you really worked on a crossover loading into that leg like if you had a basketball? Probably not a lot without a basketball. Learn how to feel that. Learn how to actually get your weight to shift to shift the weight, the, the defender center of gravity. You learn how to break those down to its simplest form. You get good at those, and then we start adding the complexity. Then the cues start going away. That's where you're gonna really start seeing yourself had a lot of success and change direction. And our goal is to try to mitigate some of those injuries as well. We don't wanna have the injuries when we're cutting.